everybody welcome to sweet cast this is clint uh maybe you watched the video i posted i think it was last week and i was sort of thinking about the idea of you know what's so wrong about posting something on indiegogo and kickstarter it can't really be that bad can it turns out i'm not the only one that was thinking a little bit about that now i wasn't anywhere close to even you know remotely putting together a campaign i was just thinking about it uh but this guy mike s miller he decided that he would go a step further and actually post a campaign on kickstarter in order to get those sweet sweet kickstarter bucks what could possibly go wrong you ask uh well you know once in the past a kickstarter has at least once uh, not allowed a comic project on their site because they didn't like the creators behind the project. That was Richard C. Meyer and John Malin for the book Jawbreakers. Now I try, I have that book. I, I looked through it and tried to find out what the objection point was. I'm still not really sure because it lines up with so much else that they already do on Kickstarter. But that was a different book. That was a different story. It was different people. It's a different time altogether. So what could possibly go wrong when Mike S. Miller puts his comic book on the site? It's not like they'd possibly tell this man that he was subjugating uh, marginalized communities. That would be impossible. Oh, but then this came out. Hey team Kickstarter, it's nice to see you consider MS-13 a marginalized group since they're the only people who are subjugated in the artwork I provided. And uh, Mike went ahead and tagged in uh, some other people like Ben Shapiro, uh, Quarter Black Garrett, and uh, Steven Crowder. Obviously, you know, it, you might as well let people know about it. Uh, so let's dig it right into what Kickstarter said. They said, hey Mike, thanks for sharing your project with us. We've carefully reviewed it against our rules capital R rules and we're unable to approve it to launch. Why would you review something against your capital R rules? I mean, they're already pitted against each other before uh, <laughs> before it's even, you know, there. They're pitted against each other. As a public benefit corporation committed to fighting inequality and creating a more equitable world. Pause right there, that's the problem is that everybody wants to change the world. This is the worst thing in the world that everybody has taught their students growing up that you're so special. The best thing that you can do with your life, the, the most important thing, not even the most important, the least you can do. The one thing you should do if you don't get anything else right is just change the world. Think of any possible way to change the world as it exists right now and that'll automatically be uh, a good positive thing that you've done. Forget anything else. I mean, who needs personal responsibility? But as long as you change the world, uh, then, you know, why not? All right, so uh, Kickstarter does not allow discrimination, subjugation, or intolerance toward marginalized groups. We recommend you rev review our capital R rules at this link and list of prohibited items this link to learn more. The decision is non-negotiable. We appreciate your understanding. So John Malin actually commented on this as well, and he knows a little bit about it because he was in this exact same scenario. He says, welcome to the band from Kickstarter Club. I told you under a week ago that Kickstarter did to us in detail. Almost, if not the exact same letter, instead of standing in solidarity against such behavior, you crossed enemy lines to see if you could sell through Satan. Right, John Malin has been there before. A lot of us have seen it happen and honestly the first time it happened it didn't really surprise me because this is how kickstarter has been for years i've never seen them turn anyone away you know or anyone get kicked off but certainly you can you can see the ideology from a mile away uh cambot says i always say it's better to learn from other people's mistakes or in any case being screwed but i guess some people can't do that this is where things get tough because like, what happens if indiegogo decides to follow suit like if they have the same kinds of rules as kickstarter then what so far things have not been like that and i'm grateful for that but you i mean it just takes one change of leadership uh one new policy one bad action somewhere for this to happen and while people are so obsessed with deplatforming others you know, th this fear is still there. There's no reason uh, why it couldn't happen at Indiegogo or elsewhere. I don't know what else there is to do about it except for talk about it, honestly. Th th this is this really is an important issue. I don't know why Kickstarter can't be more neutral with their comics. Why do they need to control things this closely? It doesn't make sense to, I think, most rational people or anyone moderate. I mean, even if you totally disagree with mike miller or uh john malin in this case anybody trying to get on kickstarter what is it exactly that makes them unable to be on kickstarter 
do you really think that if Mike Miller posted something else, maybe a kid's book that had nothing to do with race or anything, had nothing to do with gang members or criminals or anything like that, do you think that they would publish that they would allow him to be on Kickstarter? Frankly, and I'm being honest here, I think it has more to do with the fact that his name is Mike S. Miller than it does have to do with anything else. Same thing with John Malin, uh, you know, and, and associating with Richard Meyer. These are the things, these are the re- real reasons why they'll never be on Kickstarter. And I'd love to be proven wrong here. I, I'd love to see Mike just post a children's book or something, anything, something that is completely non-offensive to see if they'd let you. I wonder if Ethan Van Skyver did something that was so, uh, you know, milk toast, you know, anything, even something on the opposite end of the spectrum, something that was just so darn inclusive. Do you think they would allow it to exist? I don't think so. It has way more to do with the creator than it does the content of the book, which is unfortunate, but that's the reality that we live in. Prove me wrong, Kickstarter. Fool me once. Shame on. All right, so what is the atrocity that uh, Mike S. Miller (laughs) tried to post on Kickstarter? I've seen these pages a million times before, and I've actually already heard this argument from people that uh, apparently MS-13 gang members cannot be portrayed as villains in a comic book and certainly you know if they are they can't get beat up where does this leave us now i commented on this and mentioned that it it is a form of blacklisting in comics even though this is even in indie comics it's actually reached to indie comics this really limits your chances if you ever set everything else aside if you're unable to use kickstarter to fund your comic book that's a, that's a big problem, I and mean, it's a good thing that Indiegogo exists and that it is a really genuinely good platform for getting your comic out there and getting backers and you know getting into people's hands. But having another option at your disposal technically wouldn't, wouldn't be such a bad thing. In this case, though, it's a horrible thing, and that is because you're a bigot, and uh, they, they've done it in the no- nicest corporate way they possibly can uh, by calling Mike S. Miller a bigot. This isn't the first time that it's happened. But where does that leave Kickstarter? Well, it only takes a few examples uh, for them to do this, and it really discourages a lot of other creators from going to Kickstarter. If I were an activist, I would go to Kickstarter and just start uploading you know, different campaigns with only slightly politically objectionable stuff for them, uh, with everything else okay, and just to see how far they're willing to go or what they will and won't allow but i'm not an activist so i'm not going to do anything like that or uh, you know i've got better things to do what it does though is it has a chilling effect and therein lies the blacklist they only have to refuse a few people and it'll send the wrong kind of people away from kickstarter that's one side of it the other side of it is they specifically pick out projects that are virtue signaling i'm not going to say every single one is but many if you just go and explore comics and scroll down uh, and you know read through some of these books i've done this many many times they always have ones that reflect their political ideals and they will promote those books more heavily than they will other books time and time again uh, whereas indiegogo doesn't care they just want your money yeah Indi- indiegogo i can understand someone that just wants money that's a, a, a rational thing somebody that wants uh you know minorities <laughs> be be painted in an entirely glossy view i I mean i mean what's the point who cares just let storytelling be storytelling and if you haven't noticed there's actually a pretty big branding difference you see just from the books that get published on both uh the the, i just went up here on the front page here to look at kickstarter you kind of see even the same art standards and the same kind of themes like uh i know supernatural is a big thing on kickstarter whereas if you go over to indiegogo you'll see different kinds of artwork and different kinds of themes and yes on both you're going to get a variety of ones that earn more money ones that earn less money uh, and some that look terrible and some that look fantastic all you you run across everything but what you don't have on indiegogo is any kind of ideological leaning that is enough for for other people to be very upset about indiegogo and, and threaten to you know force them to kick certain creators off indiegogo I believe this is what Kickstarter is actually worried about because they know that a lot of the people uh, that are, I don't know, were even working at the company would absolutely kick into activist mode if they didn't like 
who was on the platform. So this was another good reminder for me as to why I chose Indiegogo over Kickstarter. I'm not really sure in theory if I launched a Kickstarter campaign, how many more backers I'd get on there that would not be going to Indiegogo to back the project. What I do know though, it fooled me, we can't get fooled again. Thanks so much for listening. I really, really appreciate your support. If you enjoyed this video content, please leave a like, subscribe, ring the bell. That really, really helps me out. And let me know in the comment section below, are you surprised at all by any of this? And what do you think is a good idea to move forward with freedom and uh, you know, not allow platforms to determine if you're allowed to publish comics? Also, don't forget, Downcast, oh, by the way, Downcast, I was thinking about this. I've got one page where a woman is being thrown out a window. And I got to imagine that that is probably not okay or, you know, throwing, I don't know, what do they call it? Dehumanizing, de subjugating, subjugating a minority. So I can promise you Downcast is not going to Kickstarter. But if you do want to support uh, a comic project that I'm working on, this is not my campaign, but I did write a 24 page story for this along with Chuck Dixon and David Furr. So I'm really, really excited about this. It's called Thrilling Comics. If you've not heard about it yet, I put the link in the description below. Go to Indiegogo and you're, well, you know, check it out. And if it interests you, please do back it. I really do appreciate your support. We got to get this thing funded so that everybody can get this golden age goodness. Thank you very much. And I'll see you next time.